you know, spent a lifetime in this business sort of studying what went wrong, uh, testing, red teaming, and things like that. And, you know, I realized at some point we're, we're literally finding the same problems over and over and over again. So we're not learning anything. And part of it was that people were confused by too many choices, so many options, conflicting reports, um, different regulatory things they had to deal with. So I, I brought a group of my best technical people together one day and said, let no one leaves the room until we agree on a small number of things that we think everyone ought to do to get started, not to solve the entire problem, but things that we think are of the highest value that they ought to be doing today. And my uh, short for me was five to seven. Uh, by the end of the day, it turned into 10. And then as we gathered more people, the price of consensus is you, you get some new ideas. So it turned into a list of 20. But that was the basic notion is how can we focus in on, instead of thousands of things to do, a relatively small number that have the greatest value. Security by its very nature can be very, very technical. And now the world is be waking up and saying, my network, my applications, the way I deliver value to my customers is on this network and I have to have security. I have to have confidence I can deliver my mission to my customers. Many business people come to me, boards come to me and uh, directors come to me and say, Jim, I know I have a fiduciary responsibility to manage this. What do I do? I, I had my security guy come in the other day and he talked to me and, and I didn't understand anything he said. And so that's a really important question that people are, re are wrestling with. How do I begin as a business person, get my hands around this? And you know, the answer is actually quite straightforward. The very first thing you need to do is say, what is it I'm trying to protect? The second thing is, do I have a structure, a framework that I can begin to build around? Something that makes sense to me as a business person. And the 20 critical controls for us absolutely hits that mark. Checklist security is, is um, one of the very worst things that can happen with security. Com compliance can often be the downfall of, of security in the sense that if all you're doing is ticking a box off, you're not necessarily addressing the core problem. All it is is that you're becoming compliant with whatever standard or whatever list it is that you happen to be referring to at that time, rather than very much focusing on what the business is trying to achieve. Checklists are not evil unless we allow them to be. So there's a great book I recommend called The Checklist Manifesto. You know, think of checklists as learning tools. So I say, you know, I've had cardiac surgery, for example. I'm thrilled that the surgical team is using a checklist. What they are doing is they're making sure we have not repeated the mistakes of the past, right? It doesn't turn those brilliant people into robots, unthinking. It allows them to kind of put that out of their mind say that the mistakes of the past have been captured, I've run through things, because again, those are people operating under pressure. It's so easy to make mistakes under pressure. So checklists give us a, a way to ensure repeatability, consistency, learn from past mistakes, and then free the humans, in theory, right, to do more creative, to look for the unusual circumstance. I don't think there's anything wrong with the 20 controls whatsoever. I think it's a way of actually ensuring that each business will focus on the, what is seen as the bare minimum of topics required to help secure your business. The danger of it though, of course, is that those 20 controls may not align with what your business requires. And so there may be large gaps left open that are not being addressed because of the way your particular company does business. I'm simple, I need to have a line so I can see trending. I, at the end of that line can be a happy face or a sad face, that's it. Anything beyond that, and it's and I can't deal with it. And then I want to have that line for every person in my room that's sitting around that table. I can hold them accountable. Who in this room is generating the most risk for this company? What are you doing about it? And when I start driving that, that's what's called tone at the top. And that's the critical thing. So I'm actually really encouraged by all of this publicity and all of this activity. So many boards are waking up and saying, we do need to deliver a tone at the top. And now the question is, how do I do that? And that's what we're here all about. I think to simplify things, you need to start from the top down. And that's whatever you do has to align with the business and actually help your business achieve its goals. When you understand what those business goals are, you can then actually start to pick and choose with more clarity and more focus what it is you need to do from a security control perspective. It irritates me the bad guys are actually better organized than the good guys right now. If you look at the way criminality works, right, there's tremendous cooperation, sharing of information, tools, uh, the uh, natural 
breakup of the marketplace into money mules and tool builders and reconnaissance people. And to see that and how quickly it operates is actually very Darwinian and very capitalistic. And I thought, boy, if, if only the good guys can get organized as quickly as the bad guys, we'll be all right.